Let's bring our analysts back in right now. And uh, I think, Leslie, we, you and I were just talking a minute ago about what happened with a couple of appointees from Mayor Lightfoot. There was one ward, the 12th, where I believe Ramirez asked not to be appointed by Lightfoot so that she wouldn't be tied with her. She ended up appointing Abarca. Who lost. And didn't endorse her, I don't think, the last time I had checked it. We lost tonight. So where do we stand on that? I lo well, anybody that was appointed by um, the mayor uh, is in a runoff. Hmm. Or lost, so outright. Alderwoman Lee, um, Scott. And Albaca? Albaca lost. Knudsen, Knudsen, Knudsen in 43. So Albaca lost. She was appointed, she lost. Can and we so pull up 12 while we're looking here, guys? Just Alderman for 12. Yeah, see where oh, we stand on that one. Yeah, so that I would just been... want to make sure that it wasn't a runoff, but okay. I'm pretty sure she lost outright. Uh, Albarco was the chief of staff, wasn't she, to the former alderman? Yes, that's. I so believe that's you're right. Yeah. So fascinating that that wasn't enough to get her over the edge. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Ramirez wins it outright. Yeah. Yeah. So if we also take a look at the past here, go back to 2019, and I know Sylvia, this is something that you had some comments on. So 2019, if we had uh, Lori Lightfoot on that slate with a different group of candidates, she advanced with 17%. And now we saw today that with that 17%, she did not make the runoff. So take us back through what was different about the makeup of the candidates there and what may have contributed to that loss for well, Lori. One of the things that we haven't talked a lot about in the election uh, at all is last time there were four white men running. <laughs> Those four white men in the last election collectively got 30% of the vote, right? So, and that was diffuse because with a combined of 30%, none of them got a whole lot. All of that vote presumably went to Vallis, who this time got 34% of the vote. So 17% wasn't enough, wasn't enough to be one of the front runners. Mm. Obviously, the other thing that we saw is, and I was just thinking about this, one of the first battles that Mayor Lightfoot had to fight was the school strike that was called mm -hmm. shortly after she was elected right. yes. by the CTU, who had put all of their eggs in another candidate uh, um, President Preckwinkle, and they they call that school strike. Her last mayor life, what's last battle now again is with CTU, mm -hmm. who really put all of their resources um, into Brandon Johnson, who was who managed with all of that the union support of obviously more than just the CTU and the new progressive support, as I'm calling it, um, right. to get the 20 percent. So 17 percent mm -hmm. is very different what she got four years last later and what she got this yeah. time, but yeah. it wasn't enough to do it. All right, let's check in with CBS 2's Charlie Lamar live at Paul Vallis' campaign headquarters. Charlie? Hey, guys, how fitting that Chicago by Frank Sinatra is now playing at the Paul Vallis party. It really has been a party for much of the night. And the crowd has thinned out behind me, but most of them are to my right at the open bar, still trying to get in a few last drinks before they do close things out tonight. But the campaign says they really are gearing up for the April runoff, and they are putting Paul Vallis' schedule together as we speak for tomorrow. But one thing that they do know is the campaign has about a million dollars cash in hand. They said they plan to go heavy with a media campaign and also a ground strategy to really secure as many votes as they need come April, guys. Cold. No? All right. Thank you, Charlie. We want to take you back to some of the results that were coming in. This is the 98% of the vote. Obviously, we already know who our finalists are, but we want to give you a picture here with Paul Vallis and Brandon Johnson, 34% and 20 as those two front runners. CBS News, Marissa Perlman live at Brandon Johnson's campaign headquarters. I thought. Well, Joe. Joe, I think I heard you there. The room full of West Sider CTU members has since cleared out many of them telling us, hey, we've got to get to school in the morning. Again, that is the base of where Brandon Johnson's campaign has come from through this entire process. This candidate may have been the surprise of the evening, but this was no su surprise to the supporters who have been behind him throughout this campaign tonight. Johnson thanked all of the candidates, including Lori Lightfoot, but started his campaign against Paul Vallis already this evening, highlighting the differences between the two candidates and says his campaign is ready to, to get to work and hit the ground running tomorrow. Back to you. Okay. Thank you, Marissa. Our political investigator, Dana Kozlov, live at the Lori Lightfoot campaign headquarters. Dana, it was an emotional night for the mayor, and she had several comments addressing the defeat tonight. Yeah, she did, Joe. First of all, she said she is leaving with her head 
held high. She says, never be afraid to be brave and to be bold. And she also said serving as mayor was the biggest honor of her life. She uh, addressed her supporters for about 20 minutes or so, thanking all of them. Interestingly, but not surprisingly, I asked if she would be available to sit down for an interview tomorrow or if she would be out uh, talking with people tomorrow, even just say thank you for your support for the four years. But she won't be doing that because she's no longer campaigning. Joe, Erica. All right. Thank you very much, Dana. Now we want to go back to our panelists here for their final thoughts on the night. So let's talk to you, Leslie, first. There's a lot of conversations that are going to have to be going on uh, with the community and the two uh, candidates that are going yeah. to be in the runoff. And I'm looking forward to those conversations. I think that we're potentially positioned to have a real ideological battle on the future of Chicago. Mm -hmm. And I hope that the election inspires mm -hmm. more people to come out to vote, yeah. especially our young people. All right.